All righty. Welcome, everybody. It is February 14th, 2020. This is the Pipeline Authoring, Authoring SIG meeting. This is our regular U.S. meeting. Uh, my name is Marky. I am one of the leads for the SIG. I welcome everybody. I usually like to just say uh, one of the things is be nice to everybody. Uh, don't, don't be rude to one another. <laughs> I don't want to have to boot anyone. So with that, welcome, and we are going to get started. I have linked, um, I have linked, Liam's linked in the chat, the document for meetings. If you could just go on there and make sure you add your name to the attendees list for February 14th. I am also going to put a link uh, to one of the items we will be discussing today, and that is the personas. Okay. Um, are you putting it in the chat or? I put it in the chat. Okay, cool. I'll also put it in the doc. There we go. Um, so you had to drop last time too, and uh, I'm, uh, so let's see here. Uh, so uh, Stephen and I, and uh, let's see here. Who was it that was also here last time? Anyways, uh, Jeff, right, we were talking about, um, so we were looking at, at the personas that you had, and it's a, it was a pretty comprehensive list. We, I was a little confused by the last item on there, the some experience, lots of experience. I wasn't sure what you had in mind. Yeah, um, so what, what I mean by the, some experience is, for example, when you have a developer that comes on, and they may have beginning to intermediate level, let's say Java experience. Okay. Whereas opposed to there may be lots of experience where someone is like, you know, I would say someone like you. Mm -hmm. uh, that knows it in depth, you know, can walk the code base fairly easy. Um, those are two personas that I feel that, that we have to address. And the documentation around this, and that's kind of where I dropped at, the, uh, at our last meeting, is when we talk about creating documentation, we have to have the personas in mind so that somebody that does not have the in-depth level of code base experience can actually get in and know how to navigate uh, in that. And one of the last things that I touched on is if we talk about those two personas, such as somebody who has uh, a little experience to somebody that has a lot of experiences, as we create those personas, there also needs to be a bridge that we create. So somebody knows how or at least has some guidance on what it means to go from beginner to intermediate and intermediate to advanced. And they know what that looks like. And our documentation should really be able to walk somebody through that. Okay. Um, so we were trying to kind of suss out what you were uh, saying. You have like 12 personas here, I think. Yeah, two, I covered quite. Two by four, uh, three by four. Um, and so we started, we were like, okay, I, I'm not sure what we can do with that. We wanted to kind of, we, we started going sort of a different direction with them to s sort of tell more stories, um, tell sort of a more focused, like who are the like sort of big bucket rather than these were smaller, more targeted buckets. Like, okay, let's try and what are the kind of the big buckets that we deal with? Um, and we had gotten to, um, basically like four, um, so far and the mark was here so he and he likes alliteration so it was you're the utilitarian um etc um he had a drop so that was when we start stopped using stop coming up with names um but anyways um anyone wants to apply a, a name to either one of these two thanks please feel free um yeah, there we go. Thank you. Um, so <clears throat> the and I think this this is uh, the the bridge that you're talking about would come somewhere in here. I think that there was when we were talking, I was thinking there needs to be probably one more persona to s somewhere in here between either between David and Lisa and between or between Erica and uh, David, uh, just to kind of Ha, fill in that that gap because um, there's there's sort of a combination of 
who who someone is and what their role is and what kind of team they're on, right? Yeah, I'm reading through this. Yeah. I think, I, I mean, just like shooting from the hip, I think it needs to be between David and Lisa. Okay. Right, because the long-term project contributors is like, okay, that's, you're, you're already in the community, you're already, yeah, involved with no, this sort of thing, involved with nowhere to get help and, and contributing back already. Um, that's, and it's not really as interesting for this group to talk about that last one because they're, they're already at a point where they're, they have their, the connections that they need um, to, get, to get knowledge. Um, even when it's hard to find, right? Um, so something in here, yeah. Yeah, I think that's where kind of it needs to go. And by all means, everybody, please, there's a collaborative effort. If you see something that's like, you think we're way off base, or even if you don't understand it, please, by all means, ask questions. Okay, I have a um, question then on, um... Distin distinguishing personas here. Is there any um, use here on distinguishing between like a, de a developer team member who is like maybe more of the DevOps side where versus like an SRE, which might be more operational focused on a DevOps side of things, or maybe like um, even like a release, um, release or productivity type team um, as maybe an in-between or would that spectrum cover like um, like a, essentially these types of personas? That's that sounds like team the, member. that almost sounds like that's the persona we're looking for. Yeah, where it that, goes from maybe DevOps to you know an SRE sort of operations keep the lights on. You know. So the <clears throat> the operations side though is is more like the utilitarians and or or either one of the utilitarians. These are the people that that are that either that are just trying to get the thing done, right? I'm just going to do the thing, right? Um, at least that's the way I was thinking of it. Um, maybe I'm not as clear on. I, I think there. I think what you're talking about somewhere in there is definitely that. That's where that the persona is. But I want to make sure that we're <laughs> separating them uh, clearly, um, or at least having a clear picture of what the what the difference is. Um, can you talk a bit more about that? Like, what do you? thinking of well I, i'm kind of thinking of some some general generalized typical personas of of jenkins like in my own experience and around like i i, I could think of like three broad categories essentially one being developers setting up um ci essentially to try to follow continuous integration and maybe you know and maybe ci cd to or, and continuous delivery potentially there is the maybe like a, a QA side of things where you're generally like automating tasks that you need that you're um, trying to run for continuous um, integration types of things or continuous testing or things like that. And then a more OPSI SRE side of things where you maybe run it, you know, you're um, automating various infrastructural tasks or um, deployment things or, or whatnot. So it's kind of like the spectrum of dev ops, dev to ops. Um, does that make sense? Yeah, it does to me. It sounds like DevOps, Dev to Ops, Dev Tools, Dev Productivity, something along those lines. Hmm. Yeah, and and I guess to add to that a little bit, um, I've, I've I've noticed like especially with um, larger companies that would get more like uh, involved in DevOps and things would tend to 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 make a distinction between like the automation team versus the 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 developer tools type of team, uh, even though or like the, the um, deployments versus the infrastructure, like the automate, basically various automation things would be kind of, um, they'd get a little more specialized than just the generic DevOps team. Okay, so uh, I'll, I'll cover where, where, where we got to in this. Mark brought up utilitarian, um, mm -hmm. and this is generally the silent majority. I think of those as generally, those are the ops people. Those are the ones that like, look, I'm just getting stuff done. I'm, I'm not interested in getting involved in the community. I'm just, uh, so I wanna, let's, let, I would say this is the, uh, the generally the ops person, right? Yeah, that makes sense. The ops end of the spectrum. So what are you talking about? What are you looking at that is not 
uh, being covered in either this or this other um, case where sort of, this is sort of the not ops uh, person. Um, when some there's the when there was someone on the team who got Jenkins going for for the team and started using it and sh and the team is has value and this is like a these are sort of a weird like uh, space to be in right where it's like okay that person left and now we've handed this to somebody else and they're trying to you know wrap their head around it right so the, this is the mm. the. Oh. I see what you're saying. Yeah. Right. I, I, I can kind of see how this actually maps out because I see the DevOps team member is somewhat what I was thinking of to a more like SRE uh, extent. Yeah, somewhat. now like I see it's what no you're longer saying. just plain ops. Right. It's uh, I want I want to I want to automate my ops in a more like thorough fashion. So in the beginning, utilitarian could be even um, for just continuous integration purposes, like uh, for, or just general, like, um, you know, um, your general automation tasks, any, anything that you, you would, you could potentially do in cron, you know, um, Jenkins is great for that type of thing. And that's right. probably, you know, that's your typical, seems to be a utilitarian view of Jenkins typically. Like I need a thing that runs stuff. Right. Yeah. Now that I see this more and, and understand this a little bit more, Liam, I don't think we actually need another. Okay. I don't think we need a brief. I don't think we need nope. something between David and Lisa. So here's, and here's, uh, and let me just, I'll finish the story and then you can tell me whether or not this is, uh, whether or not you're still on the same page. Um, this was, uh, Stephen last time was like, wanting a persona for him, right? And so, because he is one of the, he would definitely be one of the personas that we want to reach. Um, and I sort of like was pushing down on it a little bit um, because he's, Stephen is basically ends up in the long-term project contributors bucket, but that's partly because, but he, before he became like an actual contributor, he was doing things like, you know, looking at uh, writing the te a templating engine for, for his, for his Jenkins team that manages you know a large number of of uh, uh, Jenkins for a large number of teams and has to manage their their uh, where they focus their energy and stuff. So it's it's not oh. even like a so this is like that's that's where that I that I sort of pushed down underneath where Stephen is to to get this persona and. I wasn't sure if there should be another persona where it's you're not a member of a DevOps team, but you're like the the member of the team that's doing the our enterprise Jenkins stuff, right? Um, I so essentially, the next level of of Jenkins administration and automation. Yeah, something like that, where you're you're building on you're building you're building almost like a, a an internal application on top of Jenkins. To of Jenkins, right? It's it's basically like okay, I'm going to specialize Jenkins for our large team, large group, right? Multiple teams. So I, I, I think don't... that could really be David. I don't okay. think David has to be a DevOps team member. I think he that uh, can be a portion of it. it but I one. think David, it could be David. Could also be a developer that says, okay, we have Jenkins. I'm going to now, you know, build something on top of it or some automation to interface with it. But it could just be. A, right. a, an individual contributor developer that's been tasked with doing that. That makes a one lot of sense. Things, one of the things I also like is from David to Lisa, yeah. that feels like a bridge to me. Okay. Because David understands as he, and I, when I say David, I'm thinking Steven in my head. No, so, okay. Steven, so, so David has, he's, he's, he's felt the pain. He's gone to the community to ask questions. He's seen a deficiency and he figured that there's a way I can make, I can plug that hole. And by plugging that hole, I built this and David being Steven built the templating engine. Right. Whatever. And there was the bridge for him to become a long-term contributor. He saw the, he saw the gap. He, instead of expecting someone else to do the gap, he filled the gap 
and then gave it to other people. And that seems like a bridge to me. Okay. So then for me, there should be, uh, uh, then there should be one, uh, uh, a, a, a persona underneath uh, between these two, which is I'm a developer on a team that David supports, right? Like there, because what, you, what you're looking for there is someone who is not a Jenkins expert, but want, but is like, Hey, my, my, uh, our group, we have a group that does Jenkins and they've given me these tools, but there's this like, how do I write the pipeline or how do I do that? Do I have to go and ask them all the time? Or is there a community or, a, and you know, de dev tools like a, an IDE, like I expect th there's, a, there's a persona right here, <laughs> I don't know what it is, um, that uh, expects there to be dev tools. Like, hey, where's my, you know, IDE support? Where's the, where's the online document, the, the documentation that just sort of comes up everywhere and like, they expect it to behave like Java, right? Like where's, where's, where's the, where's the, 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 the IntelliJ plugin for this, right? Or where's the library for this or, right? Is that kind of where you're going? Kind of, it's, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. This is, does anyone else have any thoughts on this? Uh, if anyone else is talking, you're muted. So, you're. It sounds like you're, this is Carl. Your sound. It sounds like you're describing someone who's expecting a mature um, ecosystem, who's come from other, you know, from other technology ecosystems and is looking for work-alike tooling. Dev pro, like something like dev productivity or dev tooling maturity. Outside individual contributor. Something like that. Yeah. I mean, I, it... and then I would say, yeah, right where you're at, I'd say Olivia is looking for maturity. And now if I start to think into the future, we have the other document, which is in the notes uh, for everybody in, in the maturity model that I put that I built out. And that's where we start to say, where do these personas fall in the maturity model? Okay. I just wanted to throw a, a time marker out there. I have a hard stop in two minutes. Okay. Um, we may or may not continue depending on people's uh, interest. So uh, one of the things I will say is what we have here is very, very, very good, very detailed. I think if we, and I'm going to throw this out as an idea to the mm -hmm. team. Uh, I think if we took these personas, match them to the maturity model. Mm. And if we were to take the maturity model and start linking the maturity model to current documentation, and that's not something we're obviously going to do in, in one meeting cycle or, right, or yeah. even five meeting cycles. Uh, but I think it would be good to start helping us to decide as we have the personas, we have the maturity model, where does it fit there? And where is the documentation currently that shows how that matches? And I think we could, that's where we start to really define the pipeline SIG because we see where the deficiencies are in current documentation. And then we start going through the documentation to say, oh man, we really need this or we really need that. And then we could interface with the doc SIG to say what we need. And we start this sort of cross SIG collaboration and that will help out future wise in the future. Yeah. That would really help us to start to then find out what we're lacking from a, a pipeline authoring standpoint. Um, and that's sort of what Mark was asking about was how best to document pipeline so we can sort of loop back in with them. Yeah. Yeah. I think if we had maybe a task and, and I'm willing to, with the one minute I have left, take okay. that task to, from now to the next meeting to start to go through to make this mapping. So I can create a new document that refers to maybe some anchor in the previous document and we can start to see the, the, 
the the sort of lineage between all of these things. Okay. Um, well, I mean, I think we'll consider we'll we'll start talking about the we'll consider talking about the personas if people are interested, and uh, if you have time to come back, uh, that'd be great, and then we can see about yeah something like that. Yep, uh, I will be back. Hopefully, talk about that next 15, time. I will be okay. back in hopefully fifteen minutes. Okay. Better. All right. Bye bye. So, remaining Matt, Carl, and Devin, um, do you have anything you want to add? I mean, I, I, this persona is very minimal. I'd like there to be a little bit more there, um, but um, if anyone has anything they want to add, uh, you're all muted, though. I don't. I don't have anything to add yet, mostly because this is my first one of these meetings that I've been. Okay. To. So yeah. Okay. Cool. It seems like you covered uh, a lot of a lot of the ones I think of. Yeah. Yeah, this seems to cover the spectrum in a in a different way than I was thinking. But um, it it because of that, I think it makes it um it covers it more broadly, which is um which is good because otherwise you probably could end up with like twenty different personas. Right. Exactly. Or more. I mean, people use Jenkins in space supposedly. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> Sorry, I just got into. <laughs> I wasn't ops. I'm not ops. I, I'm DevOps. There we go. Um, yeah. Okay. There's more. There's more to that persona. I'm just not sure what to. The main thing that I'm thinking of is someone that de definitely is not thinking of Jenkins from a. Where it's sort of like the utilitarian, but but like. Um, Because they're not, they're they they would definitely prefer not to think about Jenkins. Um, they're trying to get something done, and they're trying to use it as a tool. So, I think more of a power user type of thing. Yeah, maybe. Um, like trying to use it better. Oh, well, yeah, that's the um, DevOps thing. To well. That's well so the, the the thing about the um, DevOps thing is that it, that it's like these are the people. It's actually this maybe this is when they're thinking I'm, about the design patterns and usability. They might be thinking of like higher architectural concerns. Um, those do seem related, though. Yeah, they're not the the title isn't quite right. Um cuz this is this is the developer on a team that manages like multiple Jenkinses and does all the tooling and stuff for people. And this is the consumer of that that person's work or someone that is wanting to treat Jenkins uh I want to use Jenkins like I use any other, you know, development tool, right? Oh, well, I guess from a po from from a sort of power user perspective, you you could have like both the uh, the power user who is um, you know, is essentially administering Jenkins and, and trying to get people to use it appropriately versus um, the power users who are trying to use Jenkins um, for very advanced scenarios, you know, like maybe, you know, the people who are who are using it for full on CI CD type things like where you, where you you would use Jenkins um, with GitOps or things like that. You know, that would be like super power user trying to find best practices for how should I use Jenkins in, you know, advanced scenarios or, or like modern scenarios or best practices type of thing without necessarily being like, I want to be the, the person in charge of running Jenkins and, and actually uh, the whole and maintaining the system type of thing. Whereas maybe the DevOps team member cares more about the actual build system itself too, essentially. Um, sorry. So which goes which side here? I'm, you were so that the, first, the the longer thing I was saying would be the Olivia part, the outside. Whereas the um, the per, whereas the person that that being the person more interested, perhaps like in the continuous delivery or deployment type of things. Um, using GitOps, you know, or basically trying to know the best practices of using, um, uh, of, of using Jenkins and pipelines right. to automate their various things they're trying to do. Okay. Whereas uh, the DevOps team member 
might care more about the actual um, arch like care more about how Jenkins is used. Right. That like, this person. Uh, yeah. Okay. You know, they might care more about the Jenkins specific stuff. Like mentioned there with like shared libraries or trying to you figure out the proper architecture of setting up their agents, uh, you know, and all that sort of thing. Whereas the outside developer might care more about like the, you know, the big picture type of thing like in a CICD type context, maybe, or that, yeah. So to them, Jenkins is more of a tool than, than whereas I think the DevOps team member type of thing might be using Jenkins more as like a framework almost might be the difference there. Yeah. Okay. And I, th and I think that the, the, the thing is like for the, for David at that point, you're, you're getting into a lot more mm, hairy situations, but by the, by the time they get to uh, users get to this point, they're pretty aware of what Jenkins can and can't do. And they're, they're, um, they're already sort of aware of the pain points. Um, Olivia, particularly Olivia and Erica are the ones that I think run into the walls or run into the, like the, the gotchas that, that the most, right? Um, cause yeah, I can see that. Cause, cause Jenkins is not meeting, doesn't meet their expectations, especially for, I think, uh, Olivia, that's the, the, the people that I talk to them, this is what, this is the kind of questions that I get the most from people to look, but they're like, look, I'm a dev. Where's my, de where's my, de where's my debugger? Where's my, um, testing, testing frameworks. Where's my, you know, whatever these, all these things that they sort of expect to be there for, uh, m what we'd call a mature product. Right. Well, and, uh, and, and Liam, like yeah. right now with the thing that I'm working on, yeah, I am Olivia. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Here's, you know, here's this, this mountain of shared libraries that you were trying to glue together from pieces provided by other teams. Go figure out how to make this work. Right. So uh, I'm not going to worry about the expect. Um, uh, da, 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 da. I need to do one more thing. Um, IDE integration. Okay. Devin, do you have anything to, to add to any of this? Just check it in. Uh, no, not in particular i mean okay. I, I think i would agree that i see like this olivia persona as having a lot of the, the one running into a lot of issues and being the most frustrated with jenkins the because the utilitarian basically is like I, I just they sort of these are the people that go to go to stack overflow and copy and paste something in it works yeah. cool i'm out of here yeah, um, even they if don't, it's horrible and doesn't make sense if it works it works exactly and erica doesn't expect there to be anything so they're 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 not disappointed they're like well whatever it is it is i'll i'll, I'll accept what you give me and, and work with it right um and it's really this person that's coming in where they're like okay i'm ready to do this wait what <laughs> um yeah. so uh, talking about how this maps to the maturity model uh, that of uh, that Marky was talking about, I'm not sure. Did you guys? Uh, do you guys have a link to this, to, or do I need to post it? Or can you just read it from here? I ha I had not seen it. Okay, let me uh, copy that and. It might be at the last meeting notes right there. Uh, yeah, but it's a, a longer link. So I'm going to paste oh, okay. it into the um, chat if I can find the chat. Uh, of course, now my 
there it is. <laughs> Computers are awesome. Okay, um, is that the right one? No, that is not the right one. Um, the link is this garbage, so that's not gonna help. Uh, that's the sharing, that's not what I needed. Come here, wait, okay, I can do it this way. Uh, or maybe that is the right one. Uh, yeah, looks like it is, okay. All right, that was in the chat. If you guys wanna step over there, that's great. Give people a second to look this over. Um, not sure. I'm not sure I actually understand how this maps. Uh, I, I fully understand these yet either. So, um, this is where people are on the CICD maturity. Does that sound right? Capability, maturity, okay. Hmm. I'm not sure how these map onto the onto onto this because the it's not sort of a, a one directional thing. There's uh, for the personas, they sort of go in, uh, it's not really a spectrum as much as it is a, 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 a matrix. They, they have different dimensions. So, I mean, certainly um, the uh, David persona would be somewhere in the defined to quantitatively managed kind of end of things, maybe into optimized, depending on. But this is talking about the teams that they're on. And I don't know. I mean, you guys have some experience with this. Do you, I, I don't know that the, except for maybe David, that, that there's a, a, a one area, right? For, the, for each of these personas, one kind of team or one environment that they exist in. Although, I mean, I guess, it, I guess it's, it roughly maps. I mean, David is somewhere up in here. The Olivia is somewhere in kind of this, this range in the middle. Um, and uh, utilitarian can actually sort of exist anywhere along in here because they're, they're, although uh, I guess they're more sort of in the mid to low end. Because again, if you're, once you get up to the other end, you, other end of the spectrum, people stop being just throw it together, slapdash and being more, you know, engineering excellence kind of minded. So, yeah, I mean, it, it probably actually lines, right, lines up mm, somewhere in the overlapping thing directly. Thoughts? Yeah, I, mean, I think there's, there's probably a little bit of, um, I'm struggling to find the word. It's not a, it's not a, a perfect, you know, rows yeah. and columns thing, but right, exactly. reasonably close. Yeah. Close enough for making generalizations like, like personas anyway. Right. Exactly. So as a, as a late comer to this, to this work that we're looking at, Mm -hmm. uh, and by latecomer, I mean, this meeting is the first time I've ever seen uh, any of this stuff. Right. What are we, what, to what end are we defining these personas? Is this for, is this for organizing our documentation in a better way? Is this just for sort of getting our head around where we take pipeline in the next year? Like what's, um, and if you don't want to do that here, if you want to do that offline, Liam, that's cool too, but just to sort of. Uh, no, actually, that's, that's context, I guess. So we uh, we're only three meetings and th yeah, three meetings into this sort of reboot of this, and okay. uh, 
we started off going, okay, so what, what, asking the same question you just did, was like, what do we want to achieve? Um, and uh, Marky suggested that we have some personas that, of, of people that use pipelines and are working on pipelines and, or either working on pipeline or working with pipelines that, uh, so that we can kind of talk about, um, then we, could, that would, that we, we thought that would help us focus on what, what it is that we actually want to do because we, we started off talking quite a bit about a bunch of different um, pain points and what works and what doesn't and uh, things that we could try. And it's like, okay, we, there's lots and lots of things, but we don't know yet. Um, so, uh, what we're trying to do is sort of figure out how we can serve each of these personas better with, uh, Jenkins pipelines. That's, okay. Copy that's that. the, uh, and so like the, for example, um, Stephen, uh, was talking about, uh, teaching, you know, being able to show people how, how to use pipeline better, things like Katakoda or, um, better documentation or do we need better ID tools or, I mean, this, it's really just a question of where do we focus our energy next? Um, or, or, or is the, the best thing making the, the syntax better or is it, hey, let's, let's have a, an option to use YAML instead if that's what people want to use and what does that look like? And so this is what, it, this is, we sort of started our first meeting going, oh my God, there's so much, so many different ways we could go um, and tried. And so the, the personas that we're talking about here are, uh, sort of trying to bring that, uh, bring some focus to that and looking at what we can do, you know, how can we serve each of these um, best with next steps. Okay, that was really helpful, thanks. Yeah. Um, so, Let's see. If anyone and else has I, any, and I, I, I again feel badly for asking questions about. No, no, this, not this here, is good. But, the, but Marky's background is. Uh, he, was that? Where, where, where is he from? Is he? Um, it's just I don't recognize the name. He's he's in the U.S. Um, he's been to a couple of uh, Jenkins. I think he's in the U.S. I'm pretty sure, um, and he's uh, been to a couple of uh, Jenkins Worlds and uh, Serious Pipeline user. He's been on a bunch of the uh, the the SIGs and doing work uh, around Jenkins, as far as I know. So, and I think he's okay. also yeah, I think he's also done some work on some of the plugins. So, yeah. So is he for example? I get I I didn't ask it specific more specifically enough. Is he like? Probably he, in the Lisa or the David Hamilton, area. For example, like, you know, the guy who, is he one of the people behind that, um, that, I think Booz, Booz Allen, is it? Booz ah, that, that'd be Steven. <laughs> okay, okay, got it. I, I, all right, so I was on the right track. I just didn't yes, know. yes, you're talking, th these are the right set of people that you're, that you're referring to. So, uh, Steven, who's not here today. That that's good, that's good, that's good to hear that I didn't imagine that. So, um, yeah, what you're talking about is, uh, so far, most of the people uh, in the group are either David or, or Lisa that, that, that were, you know, long-term contributors or otherwise doing things that are building on top of Jenkins. Um, and that would still include also Matt uh, and Devin and you, Carl. So uh, there's some need here to get um, a, a wider set of perspectives. And we were also talking about, can we do a, um, thinking about doing some sort of survey, uh, getting, getting people to sort of give some feedback. Uh, the, yeah, so the, there's a bunch of options there. Um, I definitely, I mean, personally, I definitely, I, I think this is, I think the Olivia, for me anyways, that now that we're talking, now that we actually created this and that's where I want, that's where I, I would want to focus, right? Um, the, the people that, um, because for me anyways, these are the people that are mm, either, e either one of these two are the people that are most likely to become long-term contributors uh, and power users that are going to, going to ask us to, you know, be interested in, in doing the, 
improving pipeline, right? Sure, um, and they're also the most likely to get frustrated and fed up and go use something different. Right. So, <laughs> But I'm not sure what, so if we map that to the maturity model, I don't know. I mean, I think that there's, for me anyways, I find it easier to tell stories about people than about organizations. Um, so, and this is definitely where I've gotten the most pointed questions uh, from people um, at, at DevOps world and stuff like that, where people are like, okay, um, I've, I'm, I've been using this for a little while and I'm, I'm looking for, how do I test my pipeline? How do I? because of the things. Yeah, it's something that's been talked about by a lot of people for a long time. And the, the, the difficulty is that this is also some of the hardest stuff to um, given the, the framework oh, the, sure. that we have, right? I don't know, Devin, you're, you have, I would say the, the most technical uh, experience in this, uh, in this realm. Um, all I can go is sort of hand wavy, like, ah, that's, that's a lot of work in there. Um, you mean like debugger wise or? Any of these things. Um, like what, in understanding what the level of effort would be to do something like this, right? Yeah, I mean, I think some of these things, like, I guess if like reusing external libraries is like pull in a separate groovy library and use that. Yeah. Like there, I would say like, we don't want you to do that. We should right. discourage that. Um, like some level of IDE integration, I think is certainly possible, especially syntax wise, not necessarily um, like super problematic. It's more like, you know, can we actually successfully maintain like a VS code plugin and keep it up to date and useful is kind of, I feel like the, the bigger question there. Uh, debugging, testing, I think are like the, the real more complicated bits. I know there's a lot of approaches to like do static testing of pipelines and shared libraries with different approaches. Some people like some of them, some people don't like them. And debugging would be nice to have, but I think it's like technically a huge hurdle, probably unrealistic to ever happen. Or at least like maybe you could, we could give you a debugger, but I don't think we could give you a debugger that stepped through your pipeline in a way that was useful. Mm. We could maybe give you a debugger that stepped through the synthetic generated groovy code, which would be completely useless. Right. Um, maybe we could give you one that went through steps or something, but I don't, it doesn't seem like that would be super useful. Uh, like basically that I skipped over all groovy code, but I don't know. It kind of depends on what you would want to do with the debugger on whether we could give you something that would be meaningful or not. Yeah, I'm wondering, like, how it would it be completely unrealistic to have something that, that would actually do stepping through the declarative pipeline? Or is that yeah. like. You could have something that steps through and, like, before a step executes, like, waits mm. and says, like, oh, the step's about to execute. But I mean, like, what information would you want to see when that happens? Right. Would that be useful? We could do it. I mean, it would have to run, like, inside of Jenkins. Mm. Um, it could be done. There's well, like for, works for it to work. For like any other debugger, I'd imagine it's like, you know, examining the state that it's running and maybe being able to inject some code to run, you know, in that context and that sort of thing. Yeah, and that I think is where it becomes quickly unfeasible. Like, um, I think if you want to do only things that look at the, the pipeline in terms of like steps and flow nodes, straightforward and it's possible. If you also want to interact with the groovy code, then I think it becomes significantly more complex. Mm. And that's where it's good to find a, a good design uh, delineation here of what of how much debugging, de how much debugability you, you want to expose based on that feasibility. Right. Yeah. I mean, really, I would say for all of these, like when you start asking these questions, um, I would say you probably want to look at creating an external, like, command line tool that your pipelines use, written in whatever language you want that can be debugged totally independently from Jenkins, 
can use any kind of libraries, what, whatever, you know, you package that together. And then Jenkins just calls your command line tool from a shell step. Um, and so you keep your, your Jenkins file as simple as possible. Anything that's interesting logic is in that command line tool. You can debug that however you want without Jenkins. Hmm. Like, I mean, obviously it's a fine line, right? Because you want people to be able to understand what their pipeline is going to do and stuff. But pipeline is not really intended to be like an application platform that you're writing sophisticated like programs against that, to where you would want a debugger. Right. Hmm. So what I'm thinking about here is just the, what you're talking about is um, so the re so the question is why do people so why are people doing shared libraries and external libraries or complex why are people in this this spot right here right where they're like okay I have to do this really complex thing we could we could. Like IDE integration for while you're like writing declarative or hey, what steps can I use? <clears throat> that would be really helpful for these people. But then when we get into, let's, let me just re or reorder these just for a second. So they're gonna like, IDE integration is, uh, you know, it's a little bit of work, it's, it's work, but it, it could be done, right? Cause you're basically, you, you do something where you get the data that can then be consumed by the IDE, right? Mm -hmm. Um, testing the pipelines, uh, testing the pipeline itself, um, probably, uh, you know, th there's already some unit test frameworks that, that people have, people are, are working with to do this stuff. Um, the, the question is when people start doing shared libraries, um, and external libraries, um, what are they trying to achieve? And like, can we, can we create something that would make it, make them more likely to use external tools than shared libraries? Yeah. I mean, I think some of it is like maybe mixed messaging and grand hopes in the past of what these things could become and what, how robust they would be eventually that kind of never materialized. Right. So like this user, we have documentation on shared libraries, but I don't think we really explicitly say like, Hey, this should be for pretty simple stuff. If you're, you know, writing, like if you're trying to create like a arbitrary class or doing any kind of subclassing or extensive object models, uh, you're probably doing too much. You should do something else, but it's possible. So people do it right. Like, yeah. Um, like I would imagine like probably the intention was more that your shared libraries would be like, Oh, here's a chunk of like what would amount to a declarative pipeline stage or something. Right. Uh, you can go ahead and call that if you want. That was probably more of like the idea of what people would do, but that's not what people did do. Yeah, I think that's probably the, the core of the issue. And I mean, I think really what we would like to do is give people some feature that makes it very clear that it is not just Groovy or Java code and you shouldn't use it that way. And you shouldn't want a debugger because that shouldn't even, it shouldn't even be something that should be useful with the feature we give you. I guess there's some, in some sense, it would be nice if we could improve shared libraries to be more like real groovy, but I just think that ultimately that's never going to. Well, it's also that you end up, right. And we end up with um, the, the problem of, of that code runs on master, which means, yeah. Yeah. And like, maybe we could change architecture of it. So it doesn't, but then it's like, 
then you delete a lot of the capabilities that people wanted shared libraries for if you can't interact with Jenkins directly because it's not on the master anymore. Um, well, and the question, the, the question I have actually for that is, is how much do people actually interact with Jenkins itself on that? Or do they, is there a way to, yeah. I mean, from what I see, like a lot of times shared libraries are used specifically because they can be run outside of the sandbox and access like Jenkins internals for like some random thing this company wants to do with like agents or something like that. All right. So it's like, I wouldn't say that everybody does use it like really extensively for that, but I would say a lot of people use it, uh, have at least like one or two things in their shared library that would not work in a model where shared libraries ran on an agent. Right. Anyways, sorry, this, that was a bit of a, a range into this, but it's worth talking about. So um, we're actually almost at time and uh, Marky hasn't made it back. So I think we'll probably go ahead and call this for now. So the, for next time, um, Marky is talking about uh, mapping these together a bit more and making that choice. Uh, hopefully he'll take a look at what we've, what we've discussed there uh, on the video. And then um, I think we'll continue with like, like how, what the, the, this question of like, how, how can we serve each of these personas best? Um, and, and, and I'll note, actually I'll put in the notes that what we talked about for, for this one, actually, I, this is kind of, I, I've been noting as we go, so that's good enough, I guess. Um, or maybe I'll just pull that over to the, the, uh, the, uh, the notes. All right. Well, thank you all for coming. And, uh, the. We'll be starting up a, uh, so we do this every week on Friday mornings, uh, from morning for Pacific time, uh, Friday at this time. Uh, and in a couple of weeks, we'll start up a uh, meeting on Thursdays for uh, the European time zone, um, which will uh, yeah, be later in the day on Thursday. So um, check out the Jenkins uh, calendar page and uh, for, for more details on that. All right. Okay, cool. Thanks, Thanks everyone. Hey, everyone.